Now, what is the motivation? Why we use WCF? Why not other framework? So, why to use WCF? It's simple because services are the core of service-oriented architecture. And Windows Communication Foundation is the easiest way to produce and consume services on Microsoft platform. By leveraging WCF, developer can focus on their application rather than on communication protocol. Definitely productivity will increase. WCF is a classic case of technology encapsulation and tooling. Developers are more productive if their tool encapsulates but not hide technological jobs wherever possible. And WCF combined with Visual Studio does exactly the same. And hence, the productivity of the product programmers, developers enhanced. So these are the simple reasons why we should use WCF. In fact, most of the programmers in current market are not uh, socket programmers. They are not network programmers. What WCF gives us basically abstract, high level of abstraction of network programming, socket programming. So the developer or the programmer, they don't have to worry about how to open sockets, how to communicate between services, how to decide which protocol to use, what format to use and all. So everything is provided by WCF and definitely that will improve the productivity of the developers, application programmers or in fact anything we have related to product development. So these are the simple reasons and motivation to use Windows Communication Foundation. Now it comes how to use WCF and what all things are required to use WCF. WCF is part of uh, Visual Studio now it is integrated with Visual Studio. If you have Visual Studio 2008, uh, we can have uh, WCF 3.0 and 3.5. Now if you have Visual Studio 2010, so we, we have WCF 4.0 available, which has a lot of new features in comparison to previous WCF versions 3.0 and 3.5. Because WCF is part of .NET, right. so we have things called side-by-side -side uses. If we have a business logic, legacy business logic, and now we have some improvement on so we can have two DLL of the same kind of business logic with different versions. So we can access both the we can use both the DLLs with different versions. Th that is through .NET and WCF is part of .NET. So that versioning is definitely uh, one of the achievement through which we can use. Uh, multiple DLLs, we can use legacy code, we can use uh, previous versions of the application. How to use WCF code walkthrough, that is precisely the uh, session objective words. And uh, I will, will talk about a simple business scenario here, as this is the basic uh, introduction to WCF and SOA, right? So I hope that audience will not expect very high level of uh, 
uh, expertise as far as the code walkthrough is concerned. The code is very simple. There are some holes in code as well. Right. So objective was simply making things simpler. So I try to make things very, very simpler right. and try to create one business scenario here. In this business scenario, we have some existing business logic. Let's say it's a calculating TDS right? and it has been happening for years and we have a service in the form of, we have a business logic in the form of a class DL. Now, we want to use through that legacy core or existing business logic plus we want to add some more services or more facilities to that particular application. So what we will do in this code walkthrough, we will use that existing class DLL. We will wrap that existing DLL in a service oriented application service that would again be a class. We will add some more business logic to the SOA class and let's say we add one more service that generates TDS service. Initially the business was not generating TDS service. So for that what we need to do, we will define service contracts for both methods. Once we have service contracts defined, we will implement the new method which is generating TDS certificate and for TDS calculation we will use our legacy method. Right? So we will use that reference in our SOA class and we will use the existing DLL. Once we have the new service implemented, we will build the DLL of that SOA class. Once the DLL is ready, meaning our SOA service is ready to be used. So how to use that service where we have two functions, calculating TDS and generating TDS certificates. There may be multiple consumers for these services. So for that what we need to do, we need to expose the services. Right. So to expose the services, we need to run these services. So to run these services, we need a platform and that thing we call basically hosting the services. To host WCF services, we have multiple choices. We can host WCF services using IIS. We can host WCF services using WAS. We can host WS, WCF services using a console application and we can simply host uh, WCF services in Windows services. So here in this code walkthrough we will use console application where we, where we will you we will post the services we have created when we talk about the service it's, it's it should have a contract it should have some behavior it should have binding it should have addressing it should have channels it should have messaging it should have formatting security etc. And all these things we will see step by step in the current code walkthrough. Most of the things are implicitly provided by WCF framework. Right? So few of the important aspects of WCF we will explore and rest of the things I leave it for the next session in fact. So hosting as a console application that is our code walkthrough exactly and the last thing once our service is hosted it's running basically 
then it is ready to be used. So if a service is ready to be used, we need consumers, the client which will use services. So use of services, what we need, we need to discover the service, discovery to get the contract and configuration that we will use add service reference. That is one of the way through which we can discover and we can get the contract and configuration from the service provider. There are other ways of doing this thing as well. We have one utility called service utility exe to discover the services. Again, the service utility will give us uh, contract information and a configuration file. So uh, it will give us a proxy through which we will contact the services provided by the service provider. Right. So in this code walkthrough, we will use first option discovery to get the contract and configuration using ASR add service references. Metadata exchange should be never tried. So there would be some behavior also we we'll talk about. So let us see the simple code first and then we will see how it works. Uh, for this I would require that you have Visual Studio 2010 running. It's maybe ultimate or professional, both will work. And uh, uh, we can have two solutions made or we can have in one solution also both the host service host and the service client. Preferably we will use two different solutions and one solution we will have our existing business logic, a DLL, TDS calc DLL, then we will have a SOA service that is again a class as a DLL, then we will have a host as a console application and all these things will be in one solution and another solution we will have a consumer that will consume the services provided by the 